Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, let's see how to work with the Digital Ocean Managed Kubernetes. So I'm going to deploy a cluster and then access it via kubectl. And at the same time, I'm also going to show you how to manage the cluster on Digital Ocean. Various things you can do like adding a node, adding a node pool, and so on. If you're going to try the Kubernetes on Digital Ocean, you can get $200 of free credit from DigitalOcean. The link is in the description. Let's go to DigitalOcean Kubernetes. So here under Manage, just click on Kubernetes. So the DigitalOcean Kubernetes does not charge for the control plane. The control plane is free. All you pay for is the work nodes that you deploy and any other thing that you deploy. So any other thing could be the DigitalOcean load balancer, Digital Ocean block storage and so on. Something else that is paid is if you scroll down, you're going to see $40 a month and that is for high availability. If you want your control plane to be highly available, that is $40 per month. I don't know how big the high availability cluster is, the control plane, the other control planes. I don't know how many are there, but you can contact support and ask them for this if that is important to you to know. Let's get deploying our cluster. And you can create a Kubernetes cluster there, or you can deploy your cluster right there. Under create, just click on Kubernetes. You choose the region for your cluster. I'm going to go with the London data center. And then for the VPC, I'm going to go with the v default VPC. But you can also create your VPC, and I believe you can attach the VPC to your cluster but you don't have to do it. You can use the default VPC network and then select a version for your Kubernetes. It's recommended to go with the latest version and that's the one I'm going to go with and then choose your cluster capacity. So these are the nodes that you deploy for your cluster. This is where your workloads are going to run and there will be node pools. A node pool is relevant in that the node pool will be of a specific type. So for example, we can have a node pool of basic premium Intel nodes. And we can say in this node pool, the nodes will be 2 GB of RAM and one virtual CPU or 2 GB RAM and two virtual CPUs. So that's the one I want to go with. And then you can set this node pool to auto scale. So whenever your workloads overpower your cluster, you can get your nodes to auto scale horizontally. And you can say the minimum nodes I want is two and the maximum nodes I want are seven. So whenever your cluster needs to scale, it can scale all the way to seven nodes. And then when workloads reduce, it will downscale it back to two or to something lower than seven. But I'm going to disable that. So that is one node pool. Let's say this one was premium Intel. So this can be for shared CPU. You can call it whatever, just name it something that you can recognize if you have multiple node pools. So that's one node pool. And then maybe you want to add another node pool with dedicated CPU. So you add the second node pool and this node pool are just a group of machines, a group of virtual machines with dedicated resources. So let's say this one, we can call it dedicated. And then we're going to select dedicated CPU and we want this to be memory optimized. Maybe you want to run a database here. Maybe this is a cluster we want to use for running Postgres and Postgres or any database or Redis and you want it to be optimized with memory. If you come down here, you can select 16 GB of RAM and two virtual CPUs, 32 GB of RAM, four virtual CPUs. Say you want to go with that. This one as well, you can set it to auto scale. If you want, more nodes, you can add more nodes. Just take note of your pricing there. You can add another node pool. You can have multiple node pools. And if you know how to deploy your workloads, you can introduce affinity so that they are deployed in whichever nodes you want them to be deployed into. But I only want to do this example with one node pool of three worker nodes. So I'm just going to delete the second node pool, but you can add node pools later on. We're going to see how to do that. 
we're going to see where you can do that so you can select additional options here you can get high availability so if you want your control plans to be highly available that will be 40 dollars a month if there's something you want just click there to enable it and then automate database management so this is free but of course the databases that you deploy will not be free the digital ocean managed database is not free i think it starts from 15 dollars and then you're just going to finalize your cluster give it a name i'll just call this one sample cluster choose the project where you want it and your monthly costs will be that create the cluster the cluster is being deployed you can see there there is a progress bar here under resources this is where your node pools will be and you can add a node pool there you can see our config file is not ready because the cluster is still being deployed but once it is ready we can download it from there and use it if you come back here under overview they tell you how you can connect to your cluster you can connect to your cluster using automated method and this is by using the digital ocean command line utility which is doctl if you have doctl installed you can use it to set up your cluster but i'm going to show you how to do it by just once you download the config file you open it you copy everything from there and then you paste it in the cube config file in your home directory i'm going to show you how to do all that let's just wait for the cluster to deploy meanwhile as it's deploying there's nothing else i can do so let's go ahead and talk about all these other options which are here let's start from this side settings so if you want various settings for your cluster just click there on settings you can change the different names for your cluster and all this just click on edit and something that's important here let's look at automatically upgrade minor version patches you can see this is disabled by default but you can come in here and enable automatic minor version updates so if version 1.32 comes out you will be updated automatically maybe that's something you don't want to do so you can go back and disable it you can also select an upgrade window and when you select that so after the time is set four hours later the updates can occur so you can set the upgrade window you can enable such upgrades such upgrades are enabled by default so whenever digital ocean is upgrading your nodes they will add additional nodes and they can move the workloads to those nodes and then once your cluster is back up all the nodes will be deleted and this is free you're not charged for these additional nodes and then you can destroy your cluster you can just click there to destroy the cluster if you click so that's it for settings let's see our cluster if it's ready and if i'm to come here okay it's not ready the nodes are running but the cluster is not ready once you see download config is enabled then you can connect to your cluster so while we still wait for the cluster to complete let me talk about all these others so you can look at your metrics you can look at the metrics for your cluster cpu load average memory usage disk usage and so on so just come in here maybe for the past 24 hours how has everything been performing and then here under marketplace you can have various tools there you can install them or you can read more maybe you want nginx ingress controller you can install it you can see that's by digital ocean all right so now that i can see the progress bar is gone and there's a green check mark there it means our cluster is ready and we can now set up kubectl so i will download the configuration before i do that make sure you install kubectl if you don't know how to install kubectl on your machine maybe it's windows just let me know i'll create a video for how to install the right version of kubectl on your windows computer if you're on linux i have a video for installing kubectl and i will put the link in the description below let's connect to our cluster so to do so i'm going to download this configuration file and i'm just going to open it so what i need to do is i need to copy everything inside of this file and i should add that in the machine the virtual machine where i want to use kubectl where i have kubectl installed 
there is a default config file that kubectl looks at and that's where you paste that content and it's usually in the home directory so instead of this file in the .cube folder this is where kubectl will look by default i think kubes.cube is not available let me do ls dash la I mean ls dash la and here i can see dot cube is not available so this means i have to create it so you can simply create it by doing mac directory and you create it in the home folder create a folder called dot cube enter and instead of this folder we want to create a file called config and i will use vim to create this instead of this file let's paste in everything we copied from the digital ocean file we downloaded Control shift v there we go escape shift zz to save clear the screen and now if i do cube ctl get nodes our nodes are ready and you can see the name is based on the node pool name that i chose so this can help you identify the nodes you're working with because it has the name so give it a name that is self-explanatory let's go and add some nodes and see if it's going to reflect here so let's go back to digital ocean maybe we realize that three nodes are not enough so let's add more come to resources and as i said you can add a node pool but in this case i'm just going to add a shared resources so here let's add a node we can resize or auto scale our node pool let's say we, we want to have five nodes you can also set up auto scaling if you forgot to set up auto, auto scaling earlier you can come in here and set up auto scaling just like we said maybe you want minimum nodes of three maximum of seven that's something you can do there it will automatically auto scale for you but in this case we had three nodes let's make it five nodes and then i'm going to save just give it time to deploy you can see it is deploying there and then once it's done we are going to do kubectl get nodes at the same time you can try to add another node pool so let's say we want to add a node pool of cpu intensive cpu intensive and this is for dedicated items that require cpu optimized machine so cpu optimized and then we can say we only want one of these nodes of cpu optimized maybe we want it to be we want it to be 8 gb ram for virtual cpus and you can also update the clusters control plane that way if you forgot to make it highly available you can still make it highly available right there so i'm just going to click on add node pool so we can see our shared cpu nodes have all been added this one is still provisioning so let's come back and run kubectl again to see if all our nodes have been added so you can see now we have five of the shared cpu let's wait for the other one to deploy Meanwhile, if you want to find out the IP of your nodes, you can just do kubectl get nodes dash o wide. And here you're going to see the internal IP for each node, external IP for each node, and the operating system that is being used is Debian 12, and the kernel version is 6, and the container version is container container d 1.6 so they're not using 1.7 yet so control l to clear the screen let's come back you can see our cpu intensive has been deployed so let's come back and see let me just remove the that and now you can see we have one cpu intensive node that we can use and 
we have all the other five shared CPUs. And once again, if you want to see the IP for your nodes, just do dash O wide. And you can see that's the internal IP. If you want to access it from within the cluster, you can use the internal IP. The external IP is also there. All right. This should be a good introduction to the Digital Ocean Managed Kubernetes. If you're going to try the Kubernetes on Digital Ocean, you can get $200 of free credit from Digital Ocean. The link is in the description. That is for new accounts. If you have a new account and you want $200 free credit with your new DigitalOcean account, you can get it from the link in the description. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. If you don't know how to install kubectl, maybe on Windows, just let me know and I can do a two, three minute video to show you how to do it. Until next time.